Right then, ladies and gentle folk, how are we all doing? Sam here, United People's TV, and we're here to talk about the game against Watford on Saturday. It's a bit of a different feeling going into this one. You know, last week we were coming into the game against Leeds off the back of everything that was happening with Maguire and Ronaldo and the captaincy issues, and you were like, I'll just end the club. Then we went and we pumped Leeds, apart from that five minutes in the second half. Fast forward, we had a week where we went to Atletico, we got steamrolled for the first half, but we came away with a vital draw going into the second leg so going at home against Watford on Saturday you have to be filled with a bit of confidence right or maybe not depending if you focus on the first half against Atletico this is going to be my conversation my video about the Watford game we're going to take a look at Watford's results how they've been playing and we're going to take a look at the starting 11 I think that Ralph Radnick should be playing against Watford on Saturday before I do begin please would you consider subscribing to United People's TV it's free go down there hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you get a ping every time I go live with a video but let's get into this one and let's talk about Watford. The best place to start here is by taking a look at their recent results. And the most recent result on Wednesday, when we were out there getting a one-all draw against Atletico Madrid, they were busy getting pumped, absolutely pumped by Crystal Palace 4-1. Now, I think all of you might remember a 4-1 result at Watford, which we won't talk about. That was the end of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. This has to be some sort of redemption for Manchester United because that would... That was horrendous, that game. But yeah, looking at what looking at Watford's results, they got pumped by Crystal Palace. They lost against Norwich. They've lost against Brighton. They've drawn against Burnley. Can relate. Uh, and they beat what they beat uh, Villa 1-0 and lost against West Ham. A very poor run of results, really, when you're looking at that. And when you're looking at Manchester United, it's not even a question. This has to be three points. But if we're looking at our recent results, we can probably point towards Burnley. You can point towards Southampton. And you can point towards Middlesbrough. Three recent results in games where we've dominated, the games where we should win on paper, were games where we haven't won, right? And it has to be different going into this game on Saturday. If we've got any chance of winning this top four race this year, we've got to do this. And Arsenal with their 2-1 win over Wolves, a massive, but they're definitely favourites for the top four. But all United can do is try and win the games in front of us. And I'll tell you what, given what we've got coming up next in the Premier League, we've got City, then we've got Spurs, and then we've got Liverpool. I think our next three Premier League games after this has to be three points on Saturday. Now, this here was the team that Ralph Randnick used against Atletico. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't think that's going to be the starting eleven that starts against Watford. Uh, he went a bit rogue, didn't he? He decided to start Victor Lindelof as right back to give United a bit more strength in the aerial duels. Well, that's what he said anyway. Fred played as the lone defensive midfielder because we all knew that Matic couldn't have survived in that game for a full 90 minutes. And I think there's definitely going to be changes. The obvious change immediately is Victor Lindelof's not going to play at right back. Now, does that mean that we're going to see him drop to the bench? Or does that mean that we're going to see him, I don't know, replace Varane or Maguire? I think, unfortunately for him, it means he's going to drop to the bench. And I think we're going to see Delo come back in ahead of Wan-Bissaka. This sort of game against Watford at Old Trafford should be United on the front foot from the first whistle, getting an early goal within the first 15 minutes, and then trying to see the game out from then on, getting a second before half time in an ideal world. Watford come out in the second half. Then we get a third, and it's game, set, and match. I mean, that's rarely how things work out with Manchester United these days, because that's far too simple, right? But I think Diogo Delo will start here ahead of Wan-Bissaka because of his attacking prowess. The fact that we want Diogo Delo actually covering down these spaces on the wings. I think he's going to be starting there. Now, when it comes to Luke Shaw, I think there's an argument really to be had because Tellers, I tell you what, was very impressive when he came on against Atletico. Uh, when we made those two fullback substitutions, Wan-Bissaka and Tellers, it changed the game. United got a bit of a grip of the game and Matic had a key role to play in that as well. I actually think maybe I think he might start Tellers in this game. I'm gonna get this one's a bit of a guess, right? There's no reason to say that either is a favourite. You could talk about Shaw's form, you could talk about Tellers' form. Well, he hasn't really had played that much. I can't don't really think you can speak about Tellers' form. But sod it, I'm gonna put Tellers in there. I'm gonna go with that. Delow and Tellers, when Ragnick went through that period for a good few weeks, they just became our two right back right back, sorry, our two full backs of choice when we were playing well. So I think he's going to go back to it. I think that's going to be the back five. De Gea in goal with Varane and Maguire. Now, of course, the Maguire conversation we can have, we, we do have every single week. I think if he was going to drop him, we would have dropped him against Leeds. He didn't drop him. I don't, I mean, he, what he was he was at fault for part of the, the Jao Felix goal. I think he could have, definitely should have marked his man more rather than letting him go. But United, you know, we invited all the pressure on ourselves in that first half. It was ridiculous. All the crap passing out from the back. I would personally like to see Lindelof and Varane. I think that's the best centre-back partnership at Manchester United, but 
If I'm going to criticise Ralph Rannick here, I think he's shown too much loyalty to Harry Maguire. That's my own personal opinion, but I think he'll start this game. Not that I think he should, but I think he will. Now, going into midfield, we definitely will not see Fred playing as a holding midfielder. It was... Um, it was... It, well, it didn't help Manchester United against Atletico, but the fact that we couldn't play Nemanja Matic because we knew, Rannick knew that he couldn't last a full 90, that's why... Matic was given the last 20, 25, and it, and it worked. Matic made a huge difference. And I think if McTominay is not... Maybe McTominay will be fit and available. We don't know that yet. But I think... Sorry, I don't know why I put McTominay's name in. I literally just said, I don't know why. Uh, it's because in my head. I think it'll be Matic to start this game. Matic isn't like 90. He can play certain games, and this game strikes me as one that he should be able to play. At home against Watford. This should be where United can control the pace of the game, and therefore... Having Matic in there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now, does that mean what does that mean about this though? I think that raises more questions. Because ideally we want to see Bruno and Pogba starting as Manchester United's two number eights. Clearly the most creative, the best players that we've got in those positions, but then you're leaving Fred out of the team. And Fred scored against Leeds. He scored two of I think United's last three goals. Um Alanga, of course. But look. No, he didn't. And no, Langer scored two of the last three, and Fred scored one. My bad. I think Fred might drop to the bench here. And I think if we're looking for control, you can put Fred in there if you want. But in this game, we don't really need Fred. We don't. Well, famous last word, Sam. I don't think we need a Fred from from the starting uh, starting whistle. I think we need Matic there to hold that position, and we need to have these two on. I don't want to be playing with Matic and Fred. It would just take a creative spark away from United. Paul Pogba was pretty shocking against uh, Atletico, but to um, defend him and Bruno, they were the victims of Atletico's incredible pressing game. They squeezed the midfield, they squeezed the space, and they neither of them had any room to operate. And, and under that pressure, their passing was just completely crap and off, kept giving away possession left, right, and center. I think both will start here against Watford, and I think they should. Now, going up front, there's one obvious change that I think we all know I'm going to make. And that is 100% Ilanga starting ahead of Marcus Rashford. Now, I think that probably means that you'll see Jaden Sancho start on the left-hand side and Ilanga start on the right-hand side. But if we're looking at someone who's going to be in the starting 11, there's absolutely no way that Ilanga doesn't start this game. That goal against Atletico Madrid, his interview after the game where he said, look, I did some research. I, I looked at Jan Black's positioning and I know that he doesn't like covering that part of the goal. Mate, mentality of the 19-year-old really is absolutely spot on. And his return for Manchester United is, mate, he turned out into the hero. On a night where we had Ronaldo, Sancho, Pogba, Bruno, it was 19-year-old Elanga in his first Champions League knockout game getting his first Champions League knockout goal. He'll definitely start. He's been one of the bright sparks of under Ragnick. He's been, I think every Manchester United manager post-Fergie has had those, those academy players who have come through. Louis van Gaal had... Um, Marcus Rashford. You had um, Jose Mourinho. You could probably put down a Scott McTominay. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of any that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did, but I'm sure he did. I'm sure I'm just forgetting. Um, but Ilanga seems to be Ragnick's man. And I'm really excited to see what he can, what he can continue to do because we can see what he has done. I just want to see more of it. Jaden Sancho. Uh, again, I thought he had a quiet night, but we uh, we didn't really... Sancho and Rashford kept dropping deep. We had no runs in behind. We had Ronaldo isolated. It's a tactically, you know, we, we were out, all out of sorts against Atletico Madrid. That's because we tried to switch it up with Lindelof coming in there and Fred. It was all out of balance, all out of kilter. We should be far more balanced and we should see the best of Jaden Sancho again against Watford, in my opinion. And Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, again, cut a very, very frustrated figure against Atletico Madrid, didn't he? You know, Manchester United didn't have enough possession, didn't have enough of the ball. But when it came to the goal, it was him who dropped deep with a little header flick back to Fred, took two Atletico Madrid players away from him and, and created space that Bruno passed into for Langer to go and score. So he impacted the game, just not directly with the goal. But Ronaldo just... Uh, Ronaldo is what Ronaldo is. We know the flaws that come and, and the problems that are caused by his presence in the team. But his presence in the team equals goals. He's the greatest goal scorer of all time. And until we have an alternative, and that's a big part of it as well. Cavani is just injured when he wants, holidays when he wants, plays for United when he wants. And I don't think he's going to be fit to start this game. So I'm not even considering him as an option. And therefore, who else have we got? Martial's gone out to Sevilla, and I don't think Rashford's a striker. 
Ronaldo's playing because we don't have much else of a choice. You could play Langer up front if you really wanted to, but I don't know why you'd do that. It's a bit weird. I think he looks better out on the wing. But I think that that, that would be my start at 11. Now, Ralph Rannick's probably going to have his uh, press conference by the time this video goes out. So I might be wrong, but Tomane might be completely fit and I'm sure there'll be some changes. But if if, if he's not fit, or uh, anyway, this would be my start at 11. Uh, back five there of De Gea, De Lowe, Tellez with Varane and Maguire in the middle. No Lindelof, of course, dropping to the bench. A midfield three of Matic, Bruno and Pogba with a front three of Ilanga, Sancho and Ronaldo. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below and whether you think United can get the three points against Watford. Because, yeah, if, if we've got any real ambitions of a top four finish this season, you've got to be beating Watford given the games we've got coming next. Let me know what you think about that, though, in the comments below. Take it easy.